Hey guys, I'm Ezra and in this Lord of the Rings Rise of War video I'm going to break down the hybrid army composition for Arwen. We already had one video about her with a three man unit army composition, but this time we are going to see how the hybrid build works out. Let's get going. So as my purple items, I have chosen the Mirkwood Bow with ranged might, the Hunter Skin with ranged vigor, Trapper's Hood with hysteria, and I also have a worn out smoking pipe with sustain, because healing is what Arwen does best. Which build am I using this time? In the man unit build, we had 7 points spent into nobility, but this build is revolving around 2 elven units and 1 man unit, which is why the 7 points into nobility would have been a waste, which is why I reinvested those points into her bottom R0 title Undomiel as well as Elven Blessing. So I maxed out her healing abilities and also make sure to put one point into cleansing touch because of the cleanse that is needed. And one point spent into parking gift is just great like return of investment. Just one point spent into this and you have a healing skill that scales with focus. As you see, this is the build. Half Elven needs to be maxed out because of two Elven units, boosting the damage to 20% for the whole of the army, and one man unit giving us the 10 stat boost to defense and speed. If you have any more points from this point onward, I would recommend to invest into Boon to get the physical damage mitigation and also the physical damage boost for your army. If you still have any more points left, I would definitely aim to put 2 points into Lady of Rivendell, 1 point into River's Wrath, just to have a chance for the stun against all enemies on round 6. And there you go, this is the build for the hybrid build. What gear do I recommend when you are playing this hybrid composition? Well we have already seen what I have equipped like the Mirkwood Bow with ranged might and then the Hunter Skin with ranged vigor or the Quilted Armor with focus protection. Against Sauron you're definitely going to need it or he's going to burst your 3 unit army. As your headpieces you either go with the Trapper Sword and Hysteria or with the Horseman's Helm and Resolve. Madness is one of her biggest weaknesses and Sauron or let's say Grima or Mouth of Sauron are going to teach you that lesson. But with this helmet you have at least something to answer against it. As your accessories, again you have three choices, Smoking Pipe of Sustain, Hifflane with Bane of Orcs or the Harp of Lothlorien with Hunter's Mark. I like this a lot, this can help you counter Grimars. Or when you play against good side, how about using it against Gilgalad? If it comes to a golden gear, now this is what we consider the best, like uh, Shilki and me. We have the Elven White Knife with Might of Elves. Your two Elven units will benefit from this a lot. And then a more universal approach is the Mithril Coat with Tactical Maneuvers. All of your units are going to benefit from this, like the plus defense boost is also affecting your man units, not just your elven units. And your helmet needs to be a hunter's guide with ages. We have already talked about how vulnerable she is against CC, like army stun or army madness. And a carved dragon tooth will be your best in slot accessory if you can have it because of the high plus attack. And also it can come with tactical mark or Blitz. Both is appreciated. If you can't have it, you can also make do with Palantir of Orphank, since this too is boosting plus attack, lots of focus and it has tactical mark as well. So what army composition makes sense with this build and these items? Let's check it out. Your most universal army will look like this, like you can always have access to sentinels, sharpshooters and heralds. And then you do just this, you have an equal amount of all of these units. 33% of each of these units. Your second formula could look something like this whenever you play in Lothlorien. Again, you will have the same amount of these units in your army, like 33% of each. Guards of the Tower, that's your first unit. Your second unit could be either Sentinels or Keepers. And as your last unit, well, since I'm not in Lothlorien right now, I can't show it, but I am using the Bow Knights as a replacement. But instead of Bow Knights, you could have March Wardens in this army comp, and that too could work. And one more recommendable army composition would be this whenever you play in Gondor and have access to Swan Knights. You want to have around 1k Swan Knights in your army, followed by an equal amount of Sentinels, 
as well as keepers. Unfortunately, I don't have access to keepers right now, but I'm using the heralds as a replacement. And there you go. You have three recommendable army compositions for this Arwen build. Our first fight is against a Gorbak player. Let's see what has happened. So Arwen has these items equipped right now, the recommended build from before, and Gorbak has these items, the Black Mace with Might of Orcs, Goblin Armor with Orcs Vigor, Bone Mask with Hysteria, and Fine Smoking Fight with Second Wind. Okay, now he has a full army, now we need to see what has happened. We have done almost 200k damage while having received almost the same amount of damage, 190k-ish. Let's see in the detailed view who has done the most amount of damage, in this case our sharpshooters. And look at the healing output of Arwen, that is quite strong, 90k healing. Next fight is against the Mouth of Sauron player and let's see, do I have an Aegis or Resolve helmet equipped? No, which is a bad sign because on round 3 we are going to eat Mouth of Sauron's army madness and that can cause quite some chaos. But not just only that, Mouth of Sauron has a skill that is shutting down one of Arwen's biggest strength. Her healing skills are going to be countered by Mouth of Sauron's anti-healing ability, which is Black Arts. That is a hardcore counter, like army madness and anti-healing. This is a bad start. But let's just check out the gear. You see this um, Mouth of Sauron hasn't even best in slot gear equipped. It's not even strengthened. Considering that, look at the damage he has done with his Blazing Tongue and Panic, Mythal Coat with Resilience of Dwarves, Warhelm with Discord, Smoking Pipe with Sustain. So not really geared, but still did this amount of damage. That is a big letdown for Arwen. In the snapshot page we have done around 120k damage while having received almost 215k-ish damage. And in the detailed view we see all of our units can't even reach the 100k damage mark. The 90k healing from before has been reduced to only 30k. Like Mouth of Sauron is a hardcore counter against Arwen. This Sauron report doesn't look good as well. Let's check out Arwen's gear. Yep, no Aegis, no Resolve equipped. Also, no Quilted Armor with Focus Protection. This just shows how susceptible she is to elemental damage and I have mentioned this a lot. Elemental damage, especially fire damage, is a big weakness of her followed by Army Madness. Sauron has both Focus Damage and Army Madness. Let's check him out. Carb of a Smite, Mithril Coat with Serenity, Bone Mask with Hysteria, Signet of the Barrows with Critical Care. He is running the Madness build, also in Feeble. This is the worst case scenario that can happen to Arwen. And not just only that, he could, if he wants, put one point into Black Arts to deny Arwen's healing. In the snapshot page we have done around 130k-ish damage while having received 270k-ish damage. In the detailed view, yeah, only the sharpshooter stayed alive enough to deal almost 80k damage, but the rest were wiped out. And this time we did 66k healing. If Sauron had selected Black Arts, he could have denied that healing too. But just to show you how susceptible Arwen is to her gear, I wanted to show you a case where she was prepared for a fight against Sauron. This time we have equipped the Quilted Armor with Focus Protection. We have a Cask of Submerged Isle with Aegis. It is the same build, nothing has changed, same army composition. And Sauron, let's check him out. As these items, Reckoning, Accelerate, Bone Armor, Fortitude of Orcs, Cask of Pride, Unwavering, Wizards Fireworks with Hunter's Mark, he has the Madness built once more with Enfeeble, he has, yeah, he too missed the opportunity to spend one point into Black Arts to deny the healing, but Focus Protection and Aegis helped us achieve this result. So you definitely can stand your ground against Sauron, you are just very vulnerable with your gear. I don't like a commander being so sensitive to her gear. Also one more reason why I don't like to main Arwen. Let's check out the snapshot page. We have done 250k-ish damage while having received under 20k damage. So this is one rare case where Arwen gets the win. Yeah, we were prepared for this. We have done 90k damage for Sentinels, also the same amount of damage for our sharpshooters, and our healing was decent. Here we are fighting a Witch King, and remember when I said her biggest weakness is elemental damage? 
yeah, that's true, but look at this. The Witch King doesn't even have Alchemists in his army comp. And Arwen's respect 5 damage mitigation is still not good enough to survive Convener's physical damage. This surprised me a lot. Like, I didn't expect this outcome. Let's see what has happened. The Witch King has these items. The Black Mace with an eye for an eye. Warbone Battleplate with Force Soul. Brutal Helmet with Melee Vigor. Drums of Baratua with Iron Guard. I'm really disappointed in Arwen. I thought she at least has a chance of drawing this decently. But no, it's a lose. In the snapshot page we have done around 130k-ish damage while having received 300k damage. The detailed view, everything was pretty much wiped out. The only redeeming thing we have is our healing, but even that wasn't enough to survive this onslaught. Let's follow up with two more battle reports revolving around Sunint. And as you see, we are running the universal army composition, but it is what it is. Against Sunint, you don't stand a chance with this universal approach. You can draw decently against Sunint when you have Rangers, Dunedines, and also, let's say, Swan Knights in your army composition, because the Swan Knights protect the Rangers and Dunedines and they have enough time to take out the Morgul Arbalest. I have some battle reports like that in the past, but unfortunately they expired and I couldn't show it. But trust me when I say you can draw decently against Sunint. Dunedines, Rangers of the North and then Swan Knights or let's say Guards of the Tower have one man unit that is tanky on the front line. It could also be Cataphracts. Anyway, let's check out the gear. We have a Trapezoid with Hysteria I see. Hysteria can help you cause some chaos when it lands against the Arbalest on round 1. Gigantic Hammer with Rend, Ranger Shroud, Resistance Protection, Hunter's Guide with Aegis, Penalty of Orphan, Tactical Mark. So he's at least somewhat prepared to mitigate the Hysteria effect with Aegis. And yeah, this is the universal meta build for Sunni. We have done almost 120k damage while having received 260k damage. We see in the detail view that everything was wiped out. The burst damage of Sunint is so strong that we don't even have time to heal our units. Like the healing too isn't enough. This is our second fight against Sunint, but this time in her beast build she has war beasts, great beasts in her army. And yeah, this is very scary because even if we had rangers and dunedines in our army composition, the great beasts are protecting the arbalests from getting hit. Dunedines and rangers are not good in taking out great beasts. In that case, you need to include bow knights because bow knights deal additional damage to larger units, which great beasts definitely are. My approach would have been dunedines, bow knights, and rangers. If that doesn't work, bow knights, dunedines, and also swan knights and see what happens. Like, I don't assume that you're going to win the fight, I'm just looking for a possibility to survive this fight. Anyway, our gear has stayed the same, nothing has changed. This Sunni has these items, gigantic hammer with break defenses, goblin armor with orcs vigor, trapper sword with hysteria, wizard's fireworks with hunter's mark. It's a pretty solid build, I can't complain it. Inspiration is maxed out. Once more we are dealing against burst damage. We have done only 150k damage while having received around 270k-ish damage. In the snapshot page we see, yep, everything was wiped out, bursted to the ground. And again we couldn't reach our 90k healing mark. There's just so much damage coming in. Arwen isn't really great in PvP against Evil Side, not even in her hybrid build with two Elven units and one man unit. That wasn't strong enough. I still lack the best in slot golden gear for her in this build to work ideally. I just wanted to point that out. I will bring one more build about Arwen, which is consisting of three Elven units which I and Shilki consider her best build. And that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this one, let me know by leaving a like, consider subscribing, share the video, that helps a lot, you can't imagine how much it helps. And that being said, I see you guys next time.